I decided on this occasion I wanted to um, get one from Banggood. Now this is a little oscilloscope. I do have an oscilloscope, but it's this big. Oh, there you go, that's big. I'll assume it goes on the top of the ball. And it looks like that's on the top of the ball. And hopefully I'll do that bit right. Oh dear, I will do the calibration and then I will put a test, build something to put a test signal into it and we'll see what happens from there. Okay, so as we left it, um, I'd put the um, system together and uh, I'd powered it up and I got something that looks slightly as oscilloscope-like on the screen, like so. And... The next part of the instructions is to verify the voltages and then to do some adjustments. So let's verify the voltages. Let's see how far I can go with me not being of an electronic type. All right, so attach the analog board to the main board. Done that. Apply the nine volt DC. Set the couple switch to the ground position. Now this is the couple switch. And if you look at that, ground is that far over. So, uh, there you go, done that. Check voltages at the points as shown in the photo. So let's get that. Now you're not gonna be able to see the um, voltages. My multimeter is there. In fact, my multimeter is um, the camera sitting on it. So normally I use my other one, but the batteries have gone in it. So I'm using my main multimeter now. So place negative pen at ground. So it's that bit there. Just to make sure, I'm going to set that to ground there, like it asked me, and I'll connect ground to that bit. Then I can just use my other probe to go through them. Right, so V1 looks like that one voltage should be naught volts well it's minus 166 oh well you know that's probably that's probably right <laughs> oh actually I've done this wrong. It doesn't want me to connect it to there. It says place a negative pin at this D ground here. Digital ground, right. Let's try that again. So V1 is now 0 volts. Right, that's fine, that's working. V2 should be 0 volts, which it is, and V3 should be 0 volts. And it is. That's a world to count down, but it gets there. V4 should be 1.44. That's V4. Right, so all seems good and dandy. Then it says... Um, we've got to look at input. Well, voltage in. Not sure where to measure voltage in from. there voltage in should be 8.25 so I was having a spot of bother um, with the second set of the step up where it says you have to adjust these two um, trimmer capacitors C3 and C5 and I couldn't work out how that when this was plugged into here, how that I could get to those capacitors because when that's there in the correct way, you couldn't, uh, you can't actually get a screwdriver into it or a trimmer into it. And then I realised that that was what this second header on the board is for. So normally, uh, this header there plugs into that when it's in standard use, but for calibration, you can plug it into this. Uh, second jumper there 
So once that's plugged in, I connect that in there and power it up. Turn on. So it powers up as before. And then um, the instructions tell you once it's booted to press the adjust button, which starts to alter that little bit there. It says hold down the adjust dial for three seconds. There you go. Then you've got that little 3.3, that 3.3 volts there at the bottom. And uh, you can change this other one volt then down to the 50 millivolts that it asks you to do. So um, that's, sorry, by turning that, you can change that there. So you do that bit. Then we plug in the this test lead. As you can see, it's starting to go a little bit crazy. And then it says to connect it to the test point, which I couldn't find, but the test point is this thing that's sticking out the end of it. So if I connect that to that now, then I get my square wave pattern on, which is what I use to calibrate it. And then the edges of these lifted a little bit. They weren't a perfect square, so changing these two uh, variable capacitors um, fixed all that. So there it is, ready calibrated. So I'm going to power that off now and I'm going to uh, assemble it. You can still see on there where I baked my, uh, when I heated that up and it baked the blue tack onto it. So let's follow the rest of the instructions then on the bottom of it. So I'm on step six now, final assembly. Um, so it's quite good. So screw the analog board, back cover to back cover. So let's start with that. There's the back cover. And that was going there. So there's little um, keys on that that the board goes into. That makes it nice and easy. And then it says screw those in. I assume that's with these little dinky. Okay, so. Ah, with the top bracket attached. No! So. Can I fit this in? No. Okay, read all the instructions first, Matthew. All right, here we go again. Let you come. So before you put this in, before you screw it on, you need to put that on and that goes in like that to cover the two little pins and then turns round. So that should now fit into those slots in the board. Make sure that's neat. There you go. And now I should be able to screw these in. Okay, that's all those in one, two, three, four. There, then the next instruction combine the front module and the back cover, put test terminal through the small slot. Right, so I assume no, I don't. So this has to go in there, and at the same time that header, which I didn't put in very well, that, those headers has to engage. So hopefully that goes in, yeah, it does. All right, so that goes in fine. Um, make sure receptacle mate with pin header, I've done that. Attach the bottom bracket before holding the two modules together. All right, so first find your bottom bracket. Oh, over there. So let's pop that in. So it looks like I have to push that out a little bit, engage the power button through there. And that should now clip in. 
There we go. Just admit this is very nice. This is nice finished case. All right, that looks fine. Okay, so that's that one. Attach the front frame is the next one, and firmly push, firmly push the frame in. So it looks like it's the same both sides. So attach that. And firmly push it in. How firmly is firmly, I don't know. Maybe it is keyed. Ah, I noticed this. I think this might be keyed slightly. Um, it does seem to taper off one way, so maybe I'll put this in the wrong way. Let's try it that way. Yeah, I think that's better. There's just a slight taper on that. Yeah, that seems much better now. I've got those in correctly. Yeah, click, click. Well, it doesn't seem to want to engage, but I think it will eventually, and it'll definitely engage once it's all screwed in and then it just says screw up the back no, no this is where it doesn't look like I've got enough screws so let's do the I'll just do these uh there you go all right so quite a lovely little device if I can I'm going to leave the plastic on at some point I'll take this apart again and um, put the correct screws in but um, altogether a nice little nice little device so it's got an on and the off button works now on and off there and there it boots so the next thing to do is to design something to build another little kit so I can send a signal into this.